Here's five quick time-saving tips while editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Number one, when you're playing back footage, you can press L to double the playback speed. So spacebar is start and stop, but pressing L while it's playing goes two times speed and allows you to listen through to, let's say, a long podcast interview. You could still understand what's being said, but you don't have to spend twice as much time reviewing the footage. You can just listen to it in double time and make your cuts and marks where you need to. You can also keep going by pressing L multiple times and that will let you scan footage faster. And you can even hold Shift and L. That will increase the playback speed in smaller increments than just two times. Additionally, not as much used is pressing J. That will begin playing the footage backwards. I don't use that as much, but double time playback speed, especially if you're re reviewing long talking segments, will quite literally save you twice as much time reviewing and cutting footage. Next, we have this little red arrow here, or when you're placing a JPEG or something of that sort. So I have this red arrow PNG. If I drag this onto my, a layer on my timeline, I can increase the scale or decrease it. I can mess with the rotation and move the position around in the effect controls window under the motion effects. And you know, typically this is how you'll place something with these sliders. But a much faster way and more intuitive to do things instead of the sliders is just highlight the motion tab here. Make sure you're in the program window. And then you can just move and drag stuff around as if you were in Photoshop or a program like that. So you can shrink things like this. You can rotate like this. And it's just a lot quicker to drag and drop things or text or shapes without needing to do the X and Y axis of sliders. So this should be able to save you a lot of time. Not only can you do this for just like if you're, let's say you're animating, you can click on the keyframe here, you can move around and then you can sort of do your animations in this way. And you see this little blue line happens showing we're going to be moving from there to there. You can also do this for a lot of different effects. So let's say I am adding a crop effect onto this clip. If I highlight the crop effect and make sure I'm in the program window, again, I can visually see things rather than having to do things with sliders. So nothing wrong with sliders, but just this visual cursor way can be really useful for certain things. Also bonus tip, if you can't see the whole working window, sometimes you can just zoom out like 50% and you can get access to those bounding box, especially when you're working with masks or effects in this way. Tip number three, this one might be something you're familiar with, but if you're not, it's probably one of the most useful is the ripple trim and ripple delete tools. So let's say I just want to trim off this first portion of the clip. Normally, you know, you'd press C to activate the razor tool. Maybe you'd create some cuts, press V to activate the select tool and then delete them. Now you have this gap in between the clips. Now notice I can actually click and highlight this gap and I can just delete it. That's very useful. That's the ripple delete tool. But if I press command Z and undo, also a useful tip, uh, instead of sometimes having to just drag things back together, snap them in place. And uh, that's happening because the snap in timeline, the magnet tool is on. You can turn that off if you don't want things to snap in place. Another thing you can do is just simply use the Q and W keys on your keyboard. So Q will just trim the end of that clip and automatically move everything over. And W will trim the other way. So we'll trim forward and bring everything over. Uh, sort of skipping over all two or three of those steps. So Q is to ripple delete or trim to the left. W trims the right portion of the clip and moves everything over. And if you ever have a large gap in your footage, just highlighting that gap and pressing delete, deletes it and moves everything over. Keep in mind that this V1, V2 track targeting, whatever one of these is highlighted blue is what will be considered the trim over points or the point that things snap back into. Next up, you might often find yourself having to fade in audio or fade out audio or fade between clips. And one of the most useful tools that you're going to reach for is just simply right clicking on a clip and applying default transition. 
for audio, that's just a constant power. So it'll just slowly fade out the audio. And for video, that's a cross dissolve. So it'll just dissolve from one clip into the next. And for like half of your transition needs, you're just gonna be either using a cut or a fade or a dissolve. If you're not fading between clips, let's say you're at the end of a clip, it'll just fade out. So it'll fade to black. And you can see as I zoom into the timeline, this little yellow piece of tape, I can extend it to make it longer or shorter. And if you're ever in the effect controls panel, you can adjust the placement of it between clips. So in this case, it fades to black. That can be a really useful tool. And a shortcut for that is just Command D. If you highlight a clip and press Command D, it'll apply the default transition. If you highlight a bunch of clips and press Command D, it will create default transitions in between all of them. Also a little bonus in the video transitions folder in the effects panel, you can actually choose any one of these to be the default. So you see right now cross dissolve has this blue box around it. That means that's the default. But let's say I wanted to do dip to black. I can right click and set that as the default and that will be the new default transition for video of course. Lastly, while we're in the effects controls panel, another really useful way to save time is to create presets of whatever effects that you often use. So I have a whole tutorial on how to create a preset and on my channel, I have hundreds of effects and transition tutorials step-by-step step that you could turn into presets. So for example, I have a whole transitions pack on my website where you can just drag and drop these presets on your clips and it will automatically create transitions for you. So you have two options there. You can go through my tutorials, learn how to save presets, save presets of your own. Or if you just want to skip all that, I've already went through all hundreds of my best tutorials and effects and packaged them down into my preset packs and effects packs, which are available on my website shop, justinodishow.com shop. If you just want to save time, get all of my dozens of effects and transitions and just import them in and start drag and dropping and not have to watch and create presets. My name is Justin Odisho. You can check out hundreds of more free tutorials on my playlist with more tips. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.